Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 5 part 2. This video is about cancer. Now cancer is kind of a sobering topic because every one of us knows someone who has been affected by cancer before. Cancer is the most common disease in developed countries and causes 1 in 4 deaths. Well, this set was before COVID time so it might have changed but hey, my point stands, it's very common. Most common cancers are prostate cancer in men and breast cancer in women. So you might want to watch out for that and, you know, figure out how to check yourself. And the reason why we want to talk about cancer is because it shows us the importance of controlling cell division precisely. In the beginning of this part, uh, two videos ago, we talked about how the cell cycle is tightly controlled and there are checkpoints to make sure that the cell cycle goes on smoothly, cell divisions happen smoothly, and you know, no DNA errors are passed on to the other cells. What happens when there's something wrong with the cell cycle? What happens if there is uncontrolled mitosis? Cancer. Cancer is a result of uncontrolled mitosis. What happens in uncontrolled mitosis? Cells divide repeatedly, cell cycle checkpoints are not controlled, and therefore there's no DNA repair. There will be a very short interface. It, because the interface is so short, um, the S phase is very small, like very short, and G2 is also very short. So DNA replication is error prone, and there's also very little growth. So they grow a little bit, but they divide very quickly short interface, very frequent mitosis. So it's not only uncontrolled mitosis, it's also division at a rapid rate, repeatedly. That causes cancer. So what are the factors that increase your risk in cancer? Okay, you might have heard these two terms before, mutagen and carcinogen. Mutagen are substances that cause mutation. Carcinogen is cancer-causing substance. There is a slight difference between these two things. Not all mutagens are carcinogenic. So not all substances that cause mutations cause cancer. Only some mutagens are considered carcinogenic. Um, so in that sense, all carcinogens are mutagens, but not all mutagens are carcinogens. If you didn't get what I said, go at 10 seconds and replay it yourself, okay? But here are a list of mutagens that could be due to, uh, could cause cancer, that could be carcinogenic. The one, ionizing radiation. For example, X-ray, gamma rays, UV light, free radicals, which are sometimes in your body, side product of some reactions. Number four, chemicals. Tar, intidium bromide, mustard gas. If you watch a lot of Marvel movies, you should know what mustard gas is. All right, number five, it could be virus infection. HPV, the human papilloma virus, is responsible for cervical cancer in women. So there you go, HIV. HIV can cause mutations in cells and sometimes it may lead to cancer. Not all the time. Sometimes only some of these are carcinogenic. Why are not why not all mutations are carcinogenic? That's because cancer is usually not due to a single mutation in a cell. Right? It's probably an accumulation of mutations, and mutations at specific places only causes cancer. Mutations only in specific genes would cause cancer. So yeah, there is some vagueness there. Okay, what other factors increases the risk of cancer, which is the main point here? These are other factors. Hereditary predisposition. Basically, if you have a family member or family history of cancer, you are more likely to get it. In breast cancer, that chance increases like, what, what was it, 30%. About 30%, 20 to 30% of breast cancer um, 
are happens in people who have family members who have breast cancer as well, who have cancer as well. So yeah, there is a family uh, thing there. Tobacco smoking and obesity. These are also habits, lifestyles that could increase the risk of cancer. But again, it's not guaranteed. It just increases the risk. So yeah, to prevent cancer, know the check, keep a healthy lifestyle, make sure you know your family history and make sure you, you know, know your risk factors. It's not guaranteed, but it's good to be aware. So as I said just now, and we have said a couple of times, cancer is due to uncontrolled mitosis and mutations in particular places. Specifically, mutation in genes that control cell division. Cancer is uncontrolled division, uh, uncontrolled mitosis, right? It's caused by uncontrolled mitosis. Why? Because the mutations are in genes that controls cell division. So the cell cycle goes crazy. So what are these genes called? So mutated genes that causes cancer are called oncogenes. And we say these oncogenes, these cancer genes are switched on. They used to be proto-oncogenes, so that's the normal gene. But when mutated, it converts to become a cancer causer gene, oncogene. Other than that, tumor suppressor genes. So genes that normally act against cancer might be switched off when a mutation happens in them. So mutation in genes that control cell divisions. Oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes are genes that are involved in cell division. Okay, so oncogenes switch on, tumor suppressor genes switch off. Cancer cells then pass on these mutations and oncogenes to daughter cells because they can escape DNA repair. And therefore, from one single mutation in a gene that controls cell division, basically, maybe just one or two mutations, after, since things are switched off and checkpoints are disabled, this can result in even more accumulated mutations. It starts off with one, two, three, or maybe even four mutations. But after many, many rounds of cell division, cancers can have these extra features. Accumulated mutations in cancer cells can cause evasion of the immune system. So the immune system cannot recognize cancer cells as foreign and problematic and destroy it. The immune system cannot recognize it at all. It thinks that the cancer cells is completely normal from the outside. Acumen mutations also can cause no programmed cell death. Now, usually when there is a problem with a cell that the cell cannot repair, it will go through programmed cell death and it will die. But cancer cells disable that program, okay? Even if there's something wrong with it, it cannot commit suicide, it cannot die, right? It cannot be destroyed. Next. Acumen mutations can also cause cancer cells to activate telomerase. So telomerase, well, helps lengthen telomeres. And if you have telomerase, like stem cells, you can divide indefinitely. So cancers now are evading immune system and can divide indefinitely. In addition to that, if there are any intra or extracellular signals to ask them to stop dividing, it will not respond. Mitosis, okay, is no longer inhibited by cell-to-cell -cell contact. Um, usually when cells touch each other, okay, not usually in a tissue, when cells touch each other, okay, for example, this cell in the middle, it grew big enough to touch the cells around it, it will stop. In a process called contact inhibition. But in cancers, even if those cells touch each other and are already compact already, it's already very congested in there, it will continue to divide. It's no longer inhibited by contact inhibition. What else? There is a loss of function or cell specialization. This is quite common in cancer cells. They cannot function like it's supposed to be. For example, we, we saw an example of leukemia last um, video, right? And leukemia is the cancer of the blood. 
when there are scans of the blood, the blood cells don't really function the way they should anymore, especially the white blood cells. So that will cause problem. Now, since they keep dividing and they have functions, this forms a mass of undifferentiated cells, so like a clump, which we then term as a tumor. So what does the tumor do? Okay, backtrack a little bit. Carcinogens can cause mutations in a gene which controls cell division and switches on the oncogene. It can result in many, many things. It can result in all of these or some of these, okay, depending on the cancer. Each cancer is different. These cancer cells are likely to escape cell death in the immune system. This cell can control rapid and uncontrolled mitosis and grows into a mass of unspecialized cells called the tumor. Now, what does the tumor do? The tumor will continue to grow. And as it grows, it displaces and compresses surrounding tissue that are functional, that are still surviving. But because it compresses, it pushes it out of the way, that becomes a problem and might cause pain. Now, at the end stage, right, at, at, when it gets very severe, the tumor will make blood capillaries grow around it. Because the tumor requires a lot of nutrients and a lot of oxygen in order for it to grow. So there will be growth of blood capillaries into a tumor. Growth of blood capillaries is called an angiogenesis. Angio has the meaning of blood vessels. Genesis means form. So blood vessel formation into a tumor. And this allows the tumor to get more nutrients and oxygen from the blood in order to continue to divide. These are some pictures of normal cells versus the cancer version. Again, it has no specific function. It has changes in cell shape. Again, it displaces and compresses surround tissue as a tumor and has a very high demand of nutrients, as I said just now. Now, there are two types of tumor, and this, this is what defines the last stage of cancer. Right, the fourth stage. When we say a person is at the fourth stage of cancer, we say the cancer is spreading. There are two types of tumors. Number one is benign. So benign is not so harmful. They do not spread from the site of origin. Uh, this, this applies to the warts or ovarian cysts or brain tumors. They are not usually um, spreadable. They don't move to other places. You can cut them out using an operation, remove it, and usually you'll be fine. However, as I said, there are tumors that can spread. And these tumors are called malignant tumors, malignant cancer cells. These can spread. Spreading throughout the body is called metastasize. So when we say the cancer has metastasized, we're saying the cancer has spread. It can undergo metastasis, and this is through the blood usually and the lymphatic system. And it can grow to another place. Okay, the primary tumor can spread to another place and allow a secondary tumor to grow. So yeah, that's not a good sign. This is why uh, sometimes even after chemotherapy, and removal of the primary tumor, cancer can relapse because it, you just need a few cancer cells in the bloodstream uh, to be able to form an entire new tumor somewhere else. Yep, and that can result in secondary growth. So yeah, there's actually a lot more about cancer we can talk about. Uh, it actually can go right deep, quite deep. Google um, if you want extra information. I also have some videos here on why cancer cells behave differently from healthy ones and why is it so hard to cure. Also check out the other videos about other topics. Um, I find them quite useful. I hope you enjoy watching them as well. But yep, that's it for me. That's the end of chapter 5. This is the chapter outline that you can use as your checklist.
If you have any questions, feel free to ping me on Teams. Bye-bye.